Okay, I'm going to start. Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Jeff in Control Robinson, of course, and I am doing a Death Watch Codex review and kind of strategy deep dive. Uh, I am live streaming this so you can see it in my VODs, and of course it will be uploaded to YouTube, which I think a lot of you are watching it there now. Um, I did get my hands on this codex a little bit late, a few days late, and then we just moved, so we've got a lot of stuff kind of out of position, and you'll notice this is a different setup. It's not what I want. We're going to set up the ideal set, uh, setup for future codexes. Um, so you're not going to be able to see as much of the stats. There's going to be a little bit of the camera shaking, all that kind of stuff, and I do apologize, but I think the content will still be really good, and hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Um, but I want to discuss a little bit more of the strategy of the codex as opposed to just literally showing all the stats, all the all the stuff about that. So I'm going to be a little bit glib on the stat line um, part of this because, you know, the codex comes out from the time of this recording today slash tomorrow. Um, so I think it's a little bit less interesting to approach it that way, a little bit more interesting to talk about what I think this codex offers, which of course is what we always do, but I'm going to just focus more on that. Um, first and foremost, this is a independent codex it's pretty well sized it is one of the you know uh more elite factions they did not get any new models per se but they are incorporating a lot of primaris stuff which opens up a huge range of possibilities and i think actually was extremely intelligent by them and makes them one of if not the best crazy to say that uh, adeptas astardes codexes to date um i think that'll be the case as we move forward the newer codexes are going to have learned from the old ones and they're going to be pretty darn good as time goes on. There is that that phrase, codex creep, um, that definitely is a thing. So as per usual, I'm going to kind of um, finger through the codex itself um, and not spend too much time talking about it. Just the standard talks about their story, some beautiful artwork, and then um, breaks down what I really like about these codexes too. And they've done it every single one, so it's kind of weird to even touch on this, but I just enjoy it a lot. They talk about kind of like their history, um, the different battles they partook, partook in, and what they've accomplished. But then it also talks about like each unit and stuff like that. Uh, here's watch captains and whatnot. So standard stuff there with the codex. Um, and I think before we get into the stat line, I, I'm going to take some advice someone gave in one of the comments in the past. And we're going to start with kind of the generic stuff, including the stratagems, and then when you get into the nitty gritty of um, the units themselves and where some of that synergy exists and what, what they can do. Um, so they're kitted out in particular, just as a, a codex, to really take on things like, well, aliens in particular, just all the alien races. Now, there's a ton of that in this in this game, so that gives them a lot of utility. And what I like about it, too, is that none of it's predetermined, so you don't build out an army that's like specifically um, meant to kill Necrons or something like that. They're just good at killing all aliens. And that's just kind of what they do. Uh, so I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to be showing the book and stuff like that, but I fully understand that you can't actually see the details very well. This is more of a just like generic, this is what the codex looks like. You're going to have to listen to my sultry words. Um, and then, of course, if you're really interested, you can grab the codex for yourself in the coming days here. Um, normally, I wouldn't do it this way, but A, like I said, it's just the setup, but B, you're going to have access to it tomorrow. If you're listening to this live, um, so it's not like it's a, a week and a half or two weeks before like I could have been doing, in which case I think it's a little bit weird to not show you the details. So they have what's called Defenders of Humanity. You know, this ability that's within range of an objective marker uh, controls the objective marker, even if there are more enemy models. So this is their objective secured. Um, so everything that has Defenders of Humanity has that. I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to take a look if that inc includes like elites and heavy supports, or if that's just the troops, which is typically the case. But some of these codexes, like Custodes, has been pretty smart about being like, all right, look, they're going to be an elite army. They need to have objective secured, more widespread. Then they have what's called mission tactics. This is their um, kind of chapter tactics, if you will. Units with this ability gain a bonus during the battle, depending on which mission tactics they are currently employing. Before the battle, pick one of the following mission tactics. The tactic you choose will remain active for the entire battle. Though it may be possible to change tactics during the course of the battle by using the adaptive tactic stratagem, for example, uh, as long as tactic, a tactic is active, it affects all units in your army that have the mission tactics ability. So, um, facing Eldar, pick the Eldar, or actually, excuse me, that's that's different. That's special ammunition. We'll get to that in a second. I'll just go down the line. 
So one is called Fuhrer Tactics. When attacking enemy unit with troops, uh, you can reroll wound rolls of one. Venator Tactics. When attacking an enemy unit which the fast, with the fast attack battlefield roll, you can reroll wound rolls of one. Dominatus. This is Elites. Reroll wounds of roll of one. Malleus Tactics. Heavy Support. This is, again, reroll wound rolls of one. Pergatus tactics, Pergatus, uh, HQ, uh, rerolling ones to wound. Raptorus, and you guessed it, it's flight, uh, flyers. I almost said flighters, but I meant to say flyers. Um, so just generally speaking, they reroll ones to wound stuff. Um, so this is good. This is amazing in the sense that it's not mega overpowered. Um, but if you notice your opponent has a ton of fast attack, troops or something you know you want to key in on this really scary guy it, it covers all of it right and it's just it's kind of cool that it's a tactical decision there that's not just broken like they all reroll wounds uh rolls of one that's a weird mouthful i think i'm saying that weird um and then that makes it less interesting and that's just what they do um so that's cool and like they said there's a stratagem to change that if you really want to so if you got rid of something that was really scary you can switch it to something else or if it's late game and like the focus is on these, you know, elites that are running around grabbing objectives, now you can reroll those uh, dice rolls of one. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the stratagems. I'm going to glaze over a few of these because uh, a lot of these are just the kind of space marine um, stratagems. They're they're just in every one of their codexes, and I'll just I'll describe it, but I won't like read it word for word. So there is armor of contempt. Use this stratagem when a Death Watch vehicle from your army suffers a mortal, a mortal wound. Roll a d6 on a 5+, plus, they ignore it. So that is in a lot of the codexes. 5+, plus feeling the pain. It is important to note that the kind of standard for this stratagem is that it's for that phase. For the rest of the phase. So a lot of people I've, I've played against get this wrong. They think it's a 5+, plus feeling the pain for the turn. Um, that would be awesome. But for one command point, that would be also completely broken and silly. So it's just for the phase, so be you know be aware of that. Of course, as it is a stratagem, you can kind of use use it um, in multiple phases. So it's not like it's a one use per turn type of thing. Auspic scan. That's just the within twelve. Uh, as long as they're Death Watch infantry, you get to intercept them. You are hitting at minus one. Uh, it's just two command points. Well, it's two command points. So this one makes a lot more sense for Death Watch, though. They have some fantastic shooting in just their generic soldiers. They all have special ammunition. You can do some serious hurting. The minus one hit does hurt, of course. Uh, but then there's things like the Watchmasters that allow you to reroll all misses. Um, watch Captains, I think, also. We'll, we'll get to them in a second, but they help you with some rerolls as well. Um, the, the, the bottom line, or if you're a frag cannon, you don't even freaking care, right? So if you have a frag cannon in your unit, now you're intercepting. Uh, it's a big deal. So this, this makes them pretty scary. Um, Armory of the Watch Fortresses, this is the one or three command point, grab one or two more relics. Hellfire Shells, we see this in other Space Marine um, codexes as well. This is if a Death Watch infantry model from your army attacks with a heavy bolter or the heavy bolter profile of an in Infernus heavy bolter, you only make a single hit roll with the weapon this phase, subtracting one is normal, if only firing an Infernus heavy bolter's heavy flamer. However, if it hits, the target suffers D3 mortal wounds. Um, so it's just a good way to churn out some mortal wounds. Death to the alien. One command point. Use the stratagem when a Death Watch unit from your army is chosen to attack in the fight phase. Each time you roll a hit roll of a 6, you get another attack. Those further attacks do not create more attacks. But this is your um, Death to the False Emperor. This is your... The various different names, but uh, this is just all aliens. So it goes on to specify if they have the Imperium Chaos or Unaligned keyword. Uh, you don't do anything to them, but if they have anything else, you do. It's kind of funny that they restrict it that way. I know what they're doing, because the list would be ridiculous if they did it the other way. But I could see future codexes getting kind of weird there, right? We'll see. We'll see if that ends up being a weird thing down the road. As of right now, no, it does exactly what they intend it to be. That means if you're hitting a Tau guy, an Eldar guy, a Terran guy, so on and so forth, if you roll a six in the fight phase, you're getting another attack. So pretty cool. It's just one command point, so why not? Teleportarium. This is one to three command points. This is your your basic put stuff in Deep Strike. It's either Infantry or Death Watch Dreadnought. It does not say 
biker or anything else. So kind of keep that in mind. But that's the standard. The Dreadnought's pretty cool, though. Uh, we'll get to that when we talk about why this codex can be really, really good. Empiric Channeling. Use a stratagem at the start of your psychic phase of a Death Watch Psyker from your army. It, this is uh, one command point, by the way. Uh, is within six of at least two other friendly Death Watch Psykers. The Psyker can immediately attempt to manifest one additional psychic power this turn. And when attempting to manifest the power, you can add two to the psychic test. Pretty good for a smite. Um, if you have three psychers in your Death Watch army, I don't know. This is just about the one the one stratagem you're doing with that. Um, but plus two to that roll is pretty sick. I don't know. It's just one command point. Maybe you like psychers anyways, and you have other use for it. This is just a bonus for that. Orbital bombardment is your standard orbital bombardment. Three command points. Nothing different there. Only in death does duty end. Two command points. Use a stratagem when a Death Watch character from your army is slain. The model summons strength for one final attack and can be immediately either shoot as if it were the shooting phase or fight as if it were your fight phase. So if they kill that character, go ahead and swing or swing again. It's kind of an interesting interpretation here. The way my friends play it, at least, is it just says make an attack as if it was your fight phase. So even if you did already swing and you die, I think you can swing again. It doesn't say if you had not swung or anything like that. It just says make another attack as if it were your fight phase um so even if it is your fight phase i think that's just trying to trying to constrain and reel in some of the other language that can make that confusing but that's pretty good honor your brothers use a strategy at the end of any fight phase select a death watch infantry or death watch biker unit from your army that unit can immediately fight for a second time that's three command points um that's interesting well that's the standard one as well uh, we, we've seen that in other places. Um, Blood Angels Codex of Note. You know, we know the Berserkers come with that ability innately. Um, so it's just pretty cool. It's just one of those things where if you did kit out your guys with some Thunder Hammers and Shields, it's a big badass unit. You need to swing again. Go for it. You'll be chopping somebody down at the knees. Wisdom of the Ancients. One command point. Use a stratagem at the start of any phase. Select a Death Watch Dreadnought from your army. Until the end of the phase, you can reroll all hits. Uh, rolls of one for Death Watch units within six of that Dreadnought. Important to note that includes the Dreadnought, by the way. It's within six of the Dreadnought. It's kind of silly to say it this way, but Dreadnoughts are within six of themselves. Flak Missile is your strat... You just We've seen this as well. It is just like the Heavy Bolter one. Uh, it's one command point, but you just do D3 Mortal Wounds to something with the Fly Rule. Um... As long as you're using a missile launcher is, is the thing here. And you add one to the hit roll. Okay. So D3 Mortal. We've seen this before as well. It's a good way to kind of chunk down Mortarian and Magnus and that kind of thing. Um, especially if you have a bunch of missile launchers. But of course, you can only use one stratagem per phase. Remember that. Ad uh, adaptive Tactics. Two command points. Use a stratagem at the start of any of your turns. After the first to change the current mission tactic for another one, if your warlord is a wit watchmaster, I almost said witchmaster, you can use the stratagem for one command point instead. Um, watchmasters are awesome. We'll talk about them a little bit later. So it's pretty reliably just one command point. If it's only one command point, and you're going to want command points with this army anyways, by the way, so battalions and brigades should be your friend, then why not? That's great. And it doesn't even have to be some huge decision like, oh my god, there is still one more fast attack unit that I really want to kill, but there's also those three heavy supports. Go ahead and switch to the heavy supports. You can switch it back later. So now we're getting into the special ammunition, and this is where they place their phallic figure below the waist on the table, and it crushes the table. It's pretty awesome. Two command points. Stem the green tide. Use the stratagem immediately before firing Overwatch with a Death Watch unit from your army against a charging orc unit. Your opponent must subtract one from their charge distance for each model in the charging unit that it was slain by your unit's overwatch fire. If you have a frag cannon, you are essentially unchargeable by any orc unit. Now, you can only use this once in the phase, but imagine how powerful that is. Um, so, you use this. Now, now look at the wording of this. Use the stratagem immediately before firing Overwatch with a Death Watch unit from any army, uh, from your army against a charging orc unit. Your opponent must subtract one from their charges for each model in the charging unit that was slain by your unit's Overwatch fire. 
You could charge with three units. This stratagem activates on your unit. As long as none of them make it into combat, all of them have this stratagem effectively affecting them. Um, because it doesn't say for the one unit or whatever, it just says every unit that loses an orc model subtracts one from it for that charge. So you can be really aggressive with a, with a unit that has a couple of frag cannons or whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be frag cannons, it's just the best example. And the orc player has to shoot them. Or he needs to charge it with something that can survive 2 or 4 d6 strength. Uh, we'll get to the frag cannon in a minute, but I think it's strength 6 minus 2 or 3, 1 damage, something like that. So you're going to lose, you know, 3, 4, 5 models uh, at least, if not more. And then you're minus 5 or 6 from the charge. Um, so yeah, if they're right next to you, I guess they still make it in at a heavy cost. But man, is that powerful. Uh, targeting Scramblers, one command point. Use a stratagem immediately after a Death Watch unit from your army has been hit by one or more Tau Empire Marker Lights. Immediately remove all Marker Light counters from that unit. So, this too is pretty awesome. The way Marker Lights typically work in Tau armies right now, they don't have 35 or 40 Marker Light guys. They're not spraying down four units with Marker Lights. They are painting the ever-living shit out of one unit. Well, at least that's what they want to do. Now, if you're facing Death Watch in your Tau, you probably are spreading those marker lights, but they, you know, you put one or two on a unit, and you, the Death Watch guy's like, actually, I don't want that unit to be affected by it at all. Boop, one command point, they're gone. Um, you should use a stratagem immediately after a Death Watch unit from your army has been hit by one or more. So you do have to, you have to do some gambling math here. If they have like four marksmen in their in their army and they hit your unit with one of them, you could use it right then. But then if they hit you with the next three, those three stick. The one is gone at the beginning. Uh, but you can wait. Yeah, it says immediately remove all marker light counters from that unit. So you wait until the third or fourth one, and then they get that third marker light on you, and you're like, no, nope, never mind, Swoop. gone. It just plays mind games with your opponent, too. That's the other thing that we don't talk too much about with stratagems, but, like, yes, that's powerful and that's really good, but it's what it does to your opponent's strategy and their mind game that, that is uh, indirectly but very powerful. Intercepting volleys, two command points. Use a stratagem immediately after your opponent moves an enemy Eldari unit that can fly in their movement phase. Pick a Death Watch unit from your army within 12 of it. That unit can immediately shoot at the enemy as if it were your shooting phase, but you must track one. So it's intercepting a flyer, basically. But it's in your opponent's turn, and it's not intercept. It's just that if they have fly, you have to shoot it. Um, that's bikes. That's flyers. A lot of things have fly rule. In the Elder Army specifically, it's amazing. Um, not nearly as powerful as the, the previous two that I just said, but it's just a really nice little touch. The two command points, I think, is to keep in alignment with um, intercepting in, in general. Now, uh, the next one is Synaptic Severance. Use the stratagem immediately before choosing targets for a Death Watch unit that your army in, shoot, in your shooting phase. That unit can target Synapse characters this turn, even if they are not the closest enemy units. Pretty damn good. The kind of funny thing is, if you're... Um, if you are a Death Watch guy and you're shooting Synapse stuff, uh, you're really, really close to the Terran anyways, and all that Synapse does, it does give them Fearless, but it also just makes them have to fight the closest thing. So it's not like killing Synapse is, is the particularly strong gem from this, it's that you could be killing something like a Malanthrope, which is giving a minus one bubble and is annoyingly a nine wound character behind stuff, that you otherwise wouldn't be shooting, and it's only tough five of the five up saves, so a lot of the Death Watch firepower would kill it in a single volley pretty easily. Um, all of a sudden, they're now no longer covered by the minus one. Uh, a lot of times, people pick their warlord to be one of those synapse creatures, so that's pretty cool as well. Um, so it's scary that way. It's not quite as cool as the others, I would say, but it, it, it's situationally very powerful. A broodlord hiding in gene sealers, for instance. Um, who else? Well, anyways, just some good examples. Overkill. One command point. Use a stratagem at the beginning of your opponent's turn before they use the reanimation protocol ability of a Necron unit within 12 of a Death Watch unit from your army. 
Your opponent subtracts one from any reanimation protocol rolls they make for that unit this turn. Uh, it's just it's just nice. Subtracting one means that if there's a unit that's still staying that you didn't kill, this makes it a lot harder for them to stand back up, which is really, really powerful, and then gives you the chance to finish off that unit. It's only one command point, which is really nice. I thought it was a good balance there. Okay. Getting away from the special ammunition now, we have Fear Doctrine. For two command points, use a stratagem just before a Death Watch unit from your army attacks enemy with the troops battlefield roll. Add one to their wound rolls for that attack. So it's like Blood Angel shooting, essentially. Um, all infantry add one to the wound roll for two command points. That is massive. Absolutely massive. Infantry covers most things in the game, but a lot of times you're shooting a Strength 4 Bolter that you can get up to minus three Ren, by the way. Um, and now that you're, now you're wounding on twos and, you know, if you picked infantry, you're wounding on twos, re-rolling ones to wound, uh, and you're hitting on threes perhaps. And then if there's a, a watchmaster nearby, you're re-rolling all misses. Hello. And as if it was bad enough, you, the, the, the next few, um, stratagems are add one to rune roll for, uh, fast attack. Elites, Heavy, HQ, Flyer. All two command points. But like I said, with your chat with your tactics, you are rerolling ones to wound. Now you're getting that down to a, a stronger roll here as well. So it, it scales up, of course, if you have these other guns, but that's just amazing. Plus one to wound is one of the biggest things in this game. Uh rerolls are obviously king, but Deathwatch has that built in as well. Uh, adding one to wound just changes the math on so many things. Because when they when they build a unit, they take into account its toughness as part of its points. Like it's like this unit is meant to be harder to kill. It's tough five. Well, if you're plus one to wound, you're shooting me a strength five heavy bolter or strength six something else like a frag cannon. Now you're wounding me on ro wound rolls of two. Uh, I'm not saying that frag cannons by the way benefit from this ammunition because I. Or death watch unit from your army attacks. No, it just says. Yeah, just a unit. So yeah, absolutely you can use that. That's amazing. Now there's, we're going to get into some weird places too with this, by the way, because it just says, use the strategy just before a Death Watch unit from your army attacks. It doesn't say infantry. It doesn't say not including vehicles. So we're going to get into some weird stuff here where fire raptors are wounding at plus one to wound. Wrap your noggin around that for a second. Or Leviathan Dreadnoughts. Optimize Salvo. Use this stratagem. It's one command point for the shooting phase immediately before choosing targets for Death Watch unit. From your army with a special issue ammunition ability, different models in that unit can use different kinds of ammunition for that attack, selected at which models will fire which type of ammunition before any hit rolls are made. Kind of cool. Um, I'm not seeing the synergy here. I I'm sure it's better than what I'm going to give it credit for, but mixing up the ammunition in there is kind of okay. Uh, there's like wounding on two pluses. There's ignoring cover. We'll get to them in a second as well. Um, I think there's the minus two rend, but minus six range. There's that kind of stuff. So, but would you would you want to mix it up? Like you know, you're split firing, so so it's like it's just kind of cool that way because you're like, oh my god, those guys are in cover. So here's the that round, and then this guy's out in the open. This other unit, um, but he's got you know a two up save. So I want to get down to minus three, and then that's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, then there's Cladis. This one is one command point. Use the stratagem in your fight phase. Select an enemy vehicle within one inch of, of watch master from your army and roll a d6 on a 2+. plus. Vehicle suffers d3 mortal wounds. Um, this one's interesting. It's only one command point, so it's like a gimme. But what it all, what I like about this a lot is if you have your watch master near your vehicle and you're about to assault it, shoot it, all that kind of stuff, this is just that additional layer of damage you're guaranteed to do to it. Almost guaranteed. It's a 2+. plus. You can reroll it with a command point or something like that. So you chuck this clavis at it or whatever, you do D3 mortal wounds to it. Is it devastating? Can it be repeated? No. But then you charge into it after shooting it, and all of a sudden you're talking about a dead vehicle. Um, decapitation Doctrine. Use this stratagem before a death watch. It's two command points. A death watch unit from your army attacks in the shooting or fight phase until the end of the phase, reroll failed wound rolls for the, care, uh, for the attacks made by that unit, the target enemy warlord. Um, again, very situational. It's two command points, so it's not that attractive. But um, it's a big deal. Warlord's an important guy. 
most of the times. Um, think to yourself of situations where, like, they made Mortarian the Warlord, they made Magnus the Warlord. Um, for some reason, they made Swarmlord the Warmlord. That wouldn't really have warm. I said warm lord, Warlord uh, against those pesky Dark Eldar. They have several Warlords, um, oftentimes. Now you're more efficiently attacking them. Tactical Flexibility. One command point. Use the stratagem at the start of your movement phase. Select a Death Watch unit from your army with the Combat Squad ability that has 10 models. That unit is immediately split into two separate units, each containing five models. You can instead select the unit of Death Watch Aggressors, Bikers, or Inceptors with the Combat Squad's ability that has six models, in which case the unit is immediately split into two separate units, each containing three. Uh, it's kind of cool if you want to do like drop manipulation. So if you have two units of five anyways, um, you can, you know, combat squad and all that kind of stuff. Eh, all right. Tempest shells. Tempest shells. Use the stratagem. It's one command point. Use the stratagem just before a Death Watch infantry model from your army attacks a vehicle with a weapon that can fire specially issue ammunition. You only make a single hit roll for the weapon this phase. However, if it hits the target, suffers D3 mortal wounds. Okay, so here's what I like about this. Use this stratagem just before a Death Watch infantry model from your army attacks a vehicle with a weapon that can use special ammunition. So if it said unit, the utility of this would be a lot further down the drain as far as I'm concerned. But now you're grabbing a unit of five or ten guys. Let's say their guns aren't the best for killing a vehicle, but whatever, you're going to give it the good college try. One of those guys has Tempest shells, fire away, D3 mortal. Pretty cool. That's all the stratagems. Um, they're very, very good, I think. The plus one to wound stuff is two command points. That's incredible. You're going to want to reliably count on doing that two, maybe three times. So that's six command points that you're looking at. Um, changing field rolls is a big deal. I like that one a lot. The uh, inter interceptor vault, or excuse me, the special ammunition against aliens. Um, I would say the green tide one is damn near broken. Uh, targeting Scramblers is incredibly powerful because Tau is one of those Space Marine killers. Well, this is a big way in shutting a lot of that down. Um, and then the other ones are useful, uh, but mostly situational. Um, the Necron one's cool, don't get me wrong. But even that, you're 12 inches away and you're just reducing it, a wound roll, or excuse me, a reanimation roll by one. Um, a lot of times a, a good player will kill an entire unit so they don't get any rolls. But this is like a nice little bonus of like, oh shit, I didn't kill him. Here you go. And then they have a lot of the good, you know, the various different strong stratagems that Space Marines have access to anyways. Fighting twice, fighting after you die, that kind of stuff. So, very, very good. Um, Warlord Traits. And again, I, I know you guys can't read these in detail. You're just going to have to trust my my nice voice and my calm reading of this. Uh, we will do a Q&A section towards the end. So, just kind of write your stuff down or keep note of it if you have specific questions. So there's six of them. Bane of Monstrosities. Reroll failed wound rolls for your Warlord when attacking enemy vehicles or monsters. Lord of Hidden Knowledge. This is the one you're going to want to take almost every single time. Once per battle, if your Warlord is on the battlefield, you can reroll a hit roll, wound roll, damage roll, or saving throw. In addition, if you if your army is battleforged and your Warlord is on the battlefield, roll a d6. Each time you use a stratagem on a 5+, plus, you gain a command point. This is your grand strategist um, Warlord trait. It's amazing. Castellan of the Black Vault, add one to the damage characteristic of one weapon carried by your Warlord. Note that that cannot be a relic of the Vigilant and does not affect the weapon using the uh, Bane Bolts of Eurexia. Eurexia. No. That's good, but no. Roll a d6 each time a Death Watch model, or excuse me, this one's called the Watch Eternal. The six, six up Field of Pain for your Warlord. Oh no, it's uh, for everyone within six. Everyone death watch within six. Ah, ah, I'll just tell you six ups are, they're annoying, but you take them for free. You usually don't spend a warlord trade on it um, unless there's just no other good options, but that's not the case. Vigilance incarnate. Once during the battle at the start of your turn, you can choose to change your army's current mission tactic for another one. Nope. If that was the only way to do it, maybe. Nowhere to hide! At the start of each of your shooting phases, pick one enemy unit anywhere on the battlefield. For the duration of the phase, that unit does not receive the benefit of cover against attacks made by Death Watch units uh, if they're within six of your Warlord trait. Hard pass. So you're just taking two. 
you're getting that five plus more command points, uh, the one free reroll, which is just another command point anyways. There is a couple fluff bunnies out there that might consider something else, but I guarantee you it's number two 98% of the time. Relics of the Vigilant. Bane Bolts of Erixia. Models with this special uh, issue ammunition ability only add one to the damage of any special issue ammunition fired by the bear. In addition, for each wound roll of a 6-plus made for the special issue ammunition, I wish they would stop saying that, fired by the bear, the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. Pretty darn cool. Um, I'm guessing there's some synergy I'm not seeing here. You can put this on something that has... A lot of DACA. I believe they did not give special ammunition to aggressors, though, so I'm trying to I'm trying to think. Um, I think it's pretty reasonable. I don't think there's anything that super abuses this, but you know, let me know if I'm wrong. The Beacon and Jealous. Once per battle, at the end of your movement phase, the bearer can use the Beacon and Jealous to teleport a friendly unit to his position. When he does so, select the Death Watch Infantry or Biker unit that is either on the battlefield or that is in Teleportatum. Teleportarium, excuse me. In either case, I say Teleportatum, you say Teleportarium. No, I'm just kidding. It is Teleportarium. Uh, or that is in a Tele... Anyways, in either case, remove this unit and then set it up wholly within six of the bear and more than nine from any enemy model. Really awesome to get people out of combat. Really awesome to redeploy a scary plasma unit. Um, you could do this with assault units, but probably not, because most assault units, like your veterans and whatnot, have jump packs or at least access to them. Um, or you could just straight up deep strike them most of the time anyways. But really cool situational thing. This is one of the relics you should be taking almost every time. Um, Dominus Aegis. Models with a Storm Shield only. The Dominus Aegis replaces the Bear's Storm Shield. The Bear has a 3 plus verbal save in addition. If the Bear does not move in your movement phase, please... Or phase? <laughs> I read please. It's like, well... It's a rule section. You probably never see that word. Then until the start of your next movement phase, friendly Death Watch models within 6 of the Bear gain a 5 plus verbal save. Not bad. Um, I, I think, you know, what's nice about 8th edition is you get to pick your relics at the table. So I'm sure there's scenarios where you're like, shit, I'm going to really want this expensive unit that hits hard to at least get a 5-up. But a 5-up is, in my opinion, like the emergency red button. It's not something to invest into, right? Um, I would just have my guy with a storm shield anyways, and then he takes the wounds to begin with. It's a 3++, plus plus. you get to reroll one of those. And then keep in mind, you can reroll one with a command point, and if you have the Lord of Hidden Knowledge, you get to reroll one of those dice as well. So that's two rerolling on a three plus plus, uh, potentially. Makes him pretty survivable. So you're not taking wounds on him if you do the the relic shield, but I, I'm just saying that I think you take the shield no matter what. Count on the rerolls, and then if it gets past that, okay, your guys are dying, but whatever. The Osseus key. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Jeff, you fool. All three of the S's are silent. The uh, key. Watch Masters only. Enemy vehicles subtract one from their hit rolls whilst they're within nine of this model. Each time the bearer fights, you can make one additional attack with the Osseus key against an enemy vehicle within one inch of them. If this attack hits, the target su uh, unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. I think it's cool that they put relics in the game that you'll never see. You will never see that. The only time you'll ever see someone take that is if they're facing a knight army. Or an army that has like two or three knights. You know, maybe it's not entirely knights, but it's literally 1,500 points of knights. Okay, sure, I'll take this relic. Minus one to hit on my single guy, and he deals D3 mortal wounds per, fa uh, per fight phase. Okay. The Thief of Secrets. Models with a power sword only. The Thief of Secrets replaces the bear's power sword and has the following profile. It is still just a power sword, but with two damage. But it has this ability. When setting up the bear, pick one of the following keywords. Orc, Terranid, Tau Empire, Eldari, or Necrons. You can reroll failed wound rolls of, for this weapon when attacking enemy units with that keyword. Never gonna take it, ever! The tomb, the tome, the tomb, the tome. 
of ectoclades. Yeah, that's all normal words. At the start of your, your turns, pick a mission tactic. Until the start of your next turn, you can choose to apply either the effects of the mission tactic that is currently active or the mission tactics you have chosen for the Tome of Ectoclades to any Death Watch unit from your army within six of the bearer each time they attack. Now that's some pretty good versatility. Um, I just don't think you're going to need to change it that much. So I, I, I hate it. Well, I don't hate. That's too strong a word. But I'm a very competitive player, guys. So a lot of times when I read these kind of things... I know that there's a certain percentage of you out there that hear me hating on this stuff. You're like, no, it's got use, Jeff. Sure it does. This one comes close, in my opinion. But I feel like the relics you're taking is still like the um, Beacon Angelus. And then if you are paying for more, Bane Bolts of Eryxia gives you a plus, you know, plus one to damage. Um, and then, yeah, the, the Tome of Ectoclades would be pretty good. But like in that order. Now, I will say, that's it for the relics. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is very, very few. Um, that's okay. Other codexes have a lot more. This one only has six. Maybe that's the standard number for, like... I don't I don't know. But it's, it's short. It's not that many. Librarius Discipline. I'm not going to spend much time on this because I think these are just the standard ones that all Space Marines get. Veil of Time. Might of Heroes, Psychic Scourge, Null Zone, Psychic Fortress, Fury of the Ancients. I believe those are all the stock standard Space Marine powers that they get in their various codexes. Um, if I'm incorrect, please do correct me. Now for the points page, I'm going to just kind of race over this. Then we're going to get to this um, the Death Watch units themselves and talk about the synergy and, and kind of what they do there. And then we'll end with a Q&A. Okay, so like I said, if you have questions, let me know. Chaplain starts at 72, 100 in Terminator Armor, Chaplain with Jump Pack is 90, Librarian 88, Librarian in Terminator Armor 120. Uh, that's, that's a lot, 32 more, more points. With the Jump Pack, he's 112, Primaris Chaplain 85, Primaris Librarian 93, uh, Primaris Watch Captain 87, Watch Captain 74, Watch Captain in Terminator Armor 105, Watch Captain with Jump Pack 93. Watchmaster 130. So they dropped the points on the Watchmaster a lot, which is awesome. Watch Captain Artemis is only 130 points, and that's their only named character. So he, that's a guy that has all kinds of stuff. We'll get to him in a second. And then there's troops. So they broke it up into two groups, which I think is really interesting. So there's the veterans. This unit can include bikers, black shields, terminators, and vanguard veterans. Bikers are 16. Black shields are... 20, or no, excuse me, Veterans are 16, Bikers are 25, Black Shields are 16, Terminators are 31, and Vanguard Veterans are 18. That's a train in the background. It's annoying as shit, but we'll get over it. Um, so pretty pricey overall, but there's a reason for that. They definitely are factoring in uh, special ammunition and different things like that. Um, also taking into account, I guess, that you can mix these guys up, but I don't think that factors into the points. That's just the advantage that Death Watch has. Then there's the Intercessors. I hate trains, man. I really do. I didn't I didn't always hate trains, but they just this part of where I live, they just blast the horn all the time. Intercessors, 18 points, aggressors 21, hellblasters 18, inceptors 25, reavers 18. Which I think is the you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's just the normal price for them. The Corvus Black Star is 150 points to start. And then they can, of course, take the Rhino Repulsor, Razorback, and Drop Pod. One of the big complaints right now with this codex is that Primaris Marines don't fit in the Corvus Black Star. There's a lot of people making a lot of meme jokes and being very upset. Being like, what? You can fit a bike in there, but not a Primaris guy? Yeah, man, they're too tall. Um, Bikers, 25 points. Yep. Inceptors. So this is just breaking down the points that I already said. Then it says... So then the, in the Elites, there's the Aggressors, which we already talked about. Yep, there they are. Dreadnought starts at 70, standard. Redemptor Dreadnought, 140, standard. Venerable Dreadnought, 90. Yep, so that's all the normal stuff. Um, I'm only going to hit on their war gear that's unique to them for the most part. You take a Xenophase Blade for 7 points. 
So Thunder Hammers on characters is 21 points. On other models, it's 16. And their veterans, I believe, can take Thunder Hammers. We'll get to that when we get to their page. It's pretty freaking good, though. Guardian Spear is 0 points. Which is a big deal, because it's a Watch Captain that can take that. Or uh, Watch Masters, excuse me. And they start at 130, so that's really nice. You don't have to pay for that. Frag Cannons went down in cost. Where is it? What? Oh, the <laughs> I was looking at the wrong part of the... Anyways, Frag Cannon, where is it? What am I looking at? What is it called? It's not, it's not called a Frag Cannon. Why am I calling it that? Somebody in the chat saved me. I thought it was called a frag cannon, is this what everyone calls it? Oh, it's called the Death Watch Frag Cannon. How silly me! Oh my god, that's so stupid. There's two guns in this whole section that have Death Watch. It's the Death Watch Shotgun and the Death Watch Frag Cannon. Anyways, it's 25 points. I thought it was more than that in the index. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's pretty darn good. Um, and then there's the Stalker Bolt Gun. We got to talk about that. Four points. Um, it is, you know, it's just adding four points to a Space Marine, so that's where you kind of consider it expensive. But I'll read the profile for it when we get to it. But it's pretty damn good. I don't know that people will be too upset with it. So. Now we're going to go to the kind of line by line on the units themselves, but unlike Codex reviews of the past, as I said at the beginning, I am not going to um, read every single stat line of all of them, because a lot of these guys are Primaris Marines or um, they're, they're Space Marine vehicles. So they've been covered... They're in other codexes, but I do want to talk about the unique options. And then I want to talk about the combos and what makes it really good. So, Knights of the Long Vigil. Um, they all have, and they shall know no fear. Well, everyone that has it has that. They can do combat squads like we talked about before deployment at the start of the game. A unit of this ability containing 10 models may be split into two units, each containing five models. Units of aggressors, bikers, or inceptors containing six models can do this, but units for three. Okay. Special issue ammunition. These are the following guns that they can take it. Absolver bolt pistol, auto bolt rifle, bolt carbine, bolt pistol, bolt rifle, bolt gun, combi flamer, combi grab, combi melted, combi plasma, guardian spear for shooting. Heavy Bolt Pistol, Hellfire Extermist, and Bolt Gun Profile Only. Mastercrafted Auto Bolt Rifle, Mastercrafted Bolt Gun, Mastercrafted Stalker Bolt Rifle, Stalker Bolt Rifle, Stalker Pattern Bolt Gun, Storm Bolter, Twin Bolt Gun. Um, so I'll have to look it up, but I believe the Aggressor's Gun is not listed there, if I'm not mistaken. Because that would be ridiculous, by the way. Um, it would be really, really ridiculous. Now, everybody that has that can take the special issue ammunition. So there's Dragon Firebolt. Add one to the hit rolls for weapons uh, when target unit that is in cover. Okay. Hellfire round. This weapon always wounds on a 2+, plus, except against vehicles or titans. Awesome. Add three inches to the range of uh, the Kraken Bolt. Add three inches to the range of this weapon if it is a pistol or six inch otherwise and improve the AP of the attack by one. An AP of 0, for instance, becomes minus 1 to a maximum of minus 2. That is damn good. Vengeance round. Subtract 3 from a pistol or subtract 6 from another gun. The AP of the attack is increased by 2. An AP of 0 becomes minus 2 to a maximum of 3. So, Kraken is to a maximum of minus 2. Vengeance is to a maximum of minus 3. But holy shit is that good. So... You're adding, you're, you're generally speaking, never going to do the Dragon Firebolt unless, I mean, fuck. You're just almost never doing it. 
if they're in cover, getting minus one rend and adding six inches to your gun means you are most likely getting more rapid fire shots off or at least more shots off, and the minus one is effectively ignoring cover anyways. Um, if they're close to you, then you're adding minus two or minus three AP with the vengeance round. You're at shorter range, but whatever, you are ignoring cover and then some. So the the Dragonfire Bolt is like one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in a codex. But it's it's stupid, it's by itself, but the other three things that Special Ammunition does is so good that we can kind of just look at that and go, that's dumb. Oh well, and then move on. The Hellfire round, always wounds on a 2+, plus, except for against vehicles or Titanic, is a big deal. Um, you're shooting a just generic bolter. Tough 6, tough 7 things out there uh, that aren't vehicles or Titanic exist. And this is a nice, amazing way to make those guys take saves. Because a lot of times they have a 3-up or 4-up. Um, and no, you're not going to drop something with this kind of a thing, but you're going to wound them. Now, almost more importantly than that, is wounding on a 2+, plus with just a bunch of DACA shooting into a screen or something like that, where you're normally wounding on perhaps a 3. Um, don't get me wrong, the Hellfire round is the least useful of the three primary ones, primary, primary one, excuse me, in my opinion. But situationally, or specifically for certain units, this is going to be incredible. Uh, but the Crack and Bolt and Vengeance rounds are just gigantic. Absolutely massive, awesome, super awesome. This is part of this is one of the, this is on the short list of things that makes this codex incredible. Um, Primaris Marines are shooting their bolt gun at range thirty six now, uh, and they're and they're still getting a minus. I think it's an additional minus one, so they're now minus two. If I'm not mistaken, are aren't uh, Primaris guns already minus one? I'll have to look that up to make sure. And then of course, as things get closer to you, because in Space Marine world they do. You start shooting vengeance rounds, and now you're at minus three or minus two at least with a lot of your guns. That is dropping shit right and left. Um, I think about this from the perspective of a Custodes player. The second you get to minus two territory, I'm taking my four up invul saves. Um, and you don't think that's that big of a deal, but it's a huge deal, especially since you can also factor in things like plus one to wound against that with a stratagem, and then rerolling ones to wound. Um, so now all of a sudden I'm taking way more saves and you are hitting me and, and wounding much more reliably. It is so powerful. It's so powerful, by the way, that I absolutely demand that anyone that's taking Death Watch builds their list around this. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. Watchmaster has a stat line of move 6, weapon skill 2, blitz skill 2, strength 4, tough 4, wound 6, attacks 4, leadership 9, save 2+. plus. He is armed with a Guardian Spear, Frag Grenades, and Crack Grenades. So not much in that way. Um, and that's all he can take, actually. You don't get to give him much more than that. But he can take Relics. You know, he's, it's a character, but he's not. Um, anyways, he knows no fear. He has the Iron Hail, so he's a 4++. Plus plus. Watchmaster, you can reroll failed hit rolls for friendly Death Watch units within 6 of this model. Just all misses. That's a pretty big deal. Keep in mind, he's 130 points, so he's not that expensive. He's got a decent beat stick line. He's a huge force multiplier. Um, and then if he's your warlord, there's a couple stratagems that are going off at half cost. Um, and then you're getting the uh, grand strategist warlord trait, essentially. It's a pretty big deal. The only named character in the in the book is Watch Captain Artemis. Move 6, weapon skill 2, blitz skill 2, strength 4, tough 4, wounds 5, attacks 4, leadership 9, save 3+. Uh, he's armed with Hellfire Extermus, a power sword, frag grenades, crack grenades, and a stasis bomb. Only one of the small be in your army. Hellfire Exter Extremis. When attacking with this weapon, choose one or both of the profiles below. If you choose both, subtract one from all hit rolls made for this weapon. Hellfire Flamer. So go ahead and subtract one from that. You don't care. It's Assault D6. It's only one damage. Uh, but this weapon automatically hits its targets. The... Weapon wounds on a 2+, plus unless it is targeting a vehicle, in which case it wounds on a 6+. plus. Um, so it's a 2+, plus flamer. No AP or anything like that, but whatever. Bolt gun, range 24, rapid fire 1, strength 4, AP 0, 1 damage. Uh, you're subtracting 1 to hit, though, if you fire both of these. Okay. 
It's got a power sword, frag grenade, crack grenade. The stasis bomb is really cool. Range is six inches. Keep that in mind. Grenade one. This weapon can only be used once per battle. If the attack hits, deal D6 mortal wounds to your target. If it misses, watch Captain Artemis suffers D6 mortal wounds. So he's hitting on twos. And you should save a command point or something to reroll that. But that's pretty amazing. Uh, he has special ammunition. He knows no fear. He has rights to the battle. You can reroll hit rolls of one made for friendly death watch units within six of him. Unstoppable champion. He has a six up field of pain. And he has a four plus invul with the iron halo. And then there are watch captains, which is what Artemis is, but not nearly as cool. Um, same stat line. Exactly. Same exact stat line. They come with a chain sword, a mastercrafted bolt gun, and bolt pistol, frag grenades, and crack grenades. This model can replace its chainsword with a relic blade or a xenophase blade. This model may replace its chainsword and mastercrafted bolt gun with two items from the Death Watch equipment list. And he may take a jump pack. Um, cool. They have a 4 plus plus as well. Rights to the battle. Can reroll hit rolls of 1 for friendly Death Watch within 6. Um, if he has jump pack, he can deep strike. And he has special issue ammunition, and he knows no fear. Um, the Xenophase Blade is... They must reroll successful and vulnerable saves for wounds caused by this weapon. The Power Sword that does that. The Relic Blade is Strength plus 2, minus 3, D3 damage. That's probably where I would go if I was if I was taking Watch Captains. I don't know that I would take Watch Captains, though. Um, they're not terrible. This is your Captain. We're seeing it. It's not as good as, like, the Blood Angel Captain, for instance, um, who gets, you know, plus 1 to wound. Um, this guy... I think you can give him a Thunder Hammer... Yeah. You can give a Thunder Hammer Storm Shield and that kind of stuff, and you can do that. It's just not as good as the other guys that do that. I don't know. It's okay. I don't know that the Death Watch gives you a special reason to do that. Um, I guess you could give him, like, a, you know, Plasma Pistol. But then I'm looking at special issue ammunition and plasma and stuff like that. It's not there. You can take Combi Melta. That's kind of funny. Oh, but it, you know what? Combi Melta says bolt gun profile only, though. So everything that can take plasma or melt and all that stuff doesn't get special ammunition, which makes sense. It's a shell. It's not, you know, the gun. So, okay, I get it. And there's the Watch Captain in Terminator Armor. It's the exact same thing, except one more wound. Save 2+, plus can deep strike. It's Terminator armor, you know? Primaris Watch Captain is just a primary... It's just the same guy, but he has one more attack, one more wound. Um, and then access to Primaris stuff. But for instance, he can't take a jump pack. Because they don't have jump packs strong enough to fly Primaris guys around. Isn't the lore kind of funny on Primaris guys? Like, you would think they would do that, but the the immediate reason they don't do that is because essentially they then cancel out Space Marines. Um, if Primaris guys just had everything Space Marines do, but a little bit better, there would be no reason to take Space Marines, um, other than they're a few points cheaper. But if they're just worse, then why? You know, you paid a little premium. But they already kind of do that, but not really. Librarians, we know about that. Chaplain, we know about that. And then there is the Veterans and Intercessors. Literally, that's what these are called. And I think that's confusing. Because what they're trying to do is this is what the unit can consist of. Um, but it literally consists of Veterans and it literally consists of Intercessors, but also other things. But the unit is called Veterans and Intercessors. I think that's a weird way to do that. I would have called them like Strike Squadron Alpha and Strike Squadron Beta. I don't know. Something. Something different than just literally one of the, the types of guys in there. So the Veterans unit, this is all of your Space Marine stuff. So you can take Vanguard Veterans, Bikers, Terminators, Black Shields, Watch Sergeants, and uh, just Veterans. Um, 
These are just your typical Death Watch straight from the index, a lot of the normal stuff that is in there. Um, the cool thing about this unit that remains true now and also is true in the index is that mixed units are very powerful. So you put a single Terminator in there. He has a 2+. plus. Maybe you give, um, you give him a Storm Shield or something like that. So this is going to be your tank. I'm like, all right, I'm going to fire four last cannons into that unit. He's like, cool. The Terminator is going to take the wounds. Three up, three up, two, uh, two, oh no, reroll. It's a three, cool, three. And then um, now they're completely fine and good. Without the Terminator, it, you're basically making a six up, six up, six up, and the guys are dead. Um, or you can do what a lot of people do too, is do Terminator with three plus plus, and then give somebody else a Storm Shield as well. Um, that's kind of your pick. It's I think almost anybody in here can take one. Um, but you can make this unit something unique in the game right now, at least. It was back in 7th where you had these mixed units with different save profiles, different toughnesses, and that was really cool because you could use it to your advantage. Like if someone's shooting Dak at you, of course you take it on the 2-plus guy. Um, but if someone's shooting something super strong, you take it on the 3-plus-plus guy. Or maybe you do throw away, you're like, all right, you fired two, one hit, one wounded. Okay, I'm taking that out on a normal, straight-up veteran, and he just dies. After I fail my six up or something like that. Okay, fine. But the next one, shit, you, you hit again. Now it's going on the three plus plus. Um, that's really cool, the ability to do that. And they also FAQ'd that with mixed toughnesses, which isn't happening here, I don't think. Actually, it is with the bike. If you put a bike in the unit, it is. Um, you choose which one to take. Or no, excuse me, it's majority. And if they're tied, then you get to choose, which of course you always take the higher one. Uh, but they did clarify it's the majority. So if you have one bike in there and five guys that are tough four and the one bike that's tough five, you don't get to pick tough five. Um, but you can game it by mixing it up otherwise. Um, so they come with a special, uh, some special rules. So mixed unit. A unit of veterans can contain models with different toughness characteristics. If this, if this is the case, use the toughness characteristic of the um, majority of the models in the unit when the enemy makes wound rolls against it. There's no majority. The Death Watch player may choose which of the values is issued. So that's what I was saying. For the purposes of determining what models a vehicle can transport, Terminators have the Terminator keyword. Bikers do not have the Infantry keyword. Instead, the Biker keyword and Vanguard veterans have the Jump Pack keyword. Okay. This uh, So they come with unflinching if there's a Terminator. This unit automatically passes morale tests if it contains any Terminators. Uh, relentless Assault. When a unit of veterans that includes any bikers falls back, it can charge later that turn. That's a huge deal. Huge deal. Atonement through uh, Honor. A unit that contains a black shield can make heroic interventions as if it were a character and must do so if able to. A unit that contains black shields can make heroic interventions as if it were a character. It's not saying... A unit of black shields it's saying if the unit includes black shields so this entire unit can heroically intervene now at first glance you look at a lot of that kind of stuff and you go that's not that big of a deal if someone's charging the whole unit they're probably charging everybody they're not keying in on like one specific guy and it's, it's a whole unit anyways but heroic interventions are way more useful than just that so like let's say you do have a character or another unit nearby and your opponent's like, well, I can probably only take on that one unit. I'm charging that. But they end up within three inches of this unit. Now you can all of a sudden heroically intervene with the entire unit, get in there, and add your attacks. It also stops them from doing, like, mega pylons. Um, I'm not trying to sit here and tell you that this is the most incredible thing in the world, but an entire unit heroically intervene will come up. It is useful. Vanguard Strike. Vanguard veterans can move across uh, models and terrain as if it were not there. In addition, when a unit of veterans that includes any Vanguard veterans falls back, it can shoot later that turn as if it could fly. So the entire unit can fall back and shoot, and then if you have a bike in there, the entire unit can fall back, shoot, and charge. Now, I don't know that you want to necessarily put everything in there, um, a bike, a black shield, a veteran, but it really encourages you to do so, which is so cool. Um, it also allows you to kind of kit out the unit the way you want it to. I personally would always have a Terminator in there with the Storm Shield uh, and probably a hammer. 
And then I would almost always have um, a Vanguard veteran so that I can fall back and still shoot. So that if I put a couple of frag cannons in there, which is the big reason why you're still taking veterans, then you can always get hit, tank it on the Terminator, fall back, and still flame the crap out of somebody. Um, I think that's pretty awesome. Where does it say... Let me, let me look at this real quick. Where's the damn stat line? You know what? Okay, here it is. I just want to look up the frag cannon real quick. The Death Watch frag cannon. Range 8, so you cannot deep strike and do it. Assault 2d6, strength 6, minus 1, 1 damage. Or, range 24, assault 2, strength 7, minus 2, 2 damage. It's pretty awesome, you guys. The the 2d6, strength 6, minus 1 is amazing. Two guys with frag cannons is 4d6, uh, strength 6, minus 1, flamers. Um, also really nice for getting around things that are minus 1 to hit and all that kind of stuff. I... They're 25 points, so I get it. I think, um, and I'll get to this in a second, but now that we have Intercessor's access for these guys as well, the utility of the frag cannons a little bit diminished because that's basically a whole other guy for those points, and they're holding a weapon that does a fraction of the damage output potentially, um, and it's not auto-hit, but it's, you know, it's another body with two wounds shooting a range potentially 36 uh, minus one weapon. It's pretty ridiculous. Or minus two weapon. I'll get to that in a second. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, this unit's still awesome. I still do like frag cannons, as I was just saying, in a very long winded way. I, I like the Terminator. I like the Vanguard Veteran. Um, putting the bike in there is not nearly as useful because falling back and still charging is not really a Space Marine thing. You should have a dedicated assault unit of sorts. Um, you probably don't mix in mediocre melee in this because that just doesn't do that much for you. Um... So Terminator, Vanguard, and then fill it out with some just straight-up veterans. You can do the the single or whatever um, Black Shield in there because they're okay. They're not too expensive. They're a few points more, but they give you the they give the entire unit heroic intervention. That'll catch some people off guard. That will absolutely catch them off guard, and it's pretty strong. Pretty cool. So I like it. Very good. Then we get over to the Intercessor unit. This includes Intercessors, Intercessor Sergeant, Hellblasters, Inceptors, Reavers, and Aggressors. Um, they have the mixed unit rule as well, which is exactly the same thing. And this is for the purpose of determining what model of vehicle can transport. Aggressors and Inceptors have the Mark X Gravis keyword, and Inceptors have the Jump Pack keyword. Okay. Auxiliary Grenade Launcher. If a model equipped with an Auxiliary Grenade Launcher increases the range of any grenade weapons they have to 30, Crushing Charge, roll a D6. Each time an Inceptor finishes a charge move within one of an enemy... Unit on a 6, that unit suffers a mortal wound. Those are all normal rules. Inceptor Strike. Inceptors can move across by... Uh, yep. If you have one Inceptor in there, you can fall back and still shoot. Grapnel Launchers. That train, man. Uh, so it's just to explain the normal things, like Grapnel Launchers for Reavers. Terror Troops. Enemy units must subtract one from their leadership characters if they are within three of any Reaver units or units that include any Reaver models. So you put a single Reaver in there, get within um, three of this unit, and now you're at minus one leadership. Firestorm aggressors in this unit can fire twice if they remain stationary during their turn, including when firing Overwatch. That's a normal rule for them. Relentless Advance, a unit of intercessors that includes any aggressors, does not suffer any penalty to their hit rolls for advancing and firing. Assault weapons or for moving and firing heavy weapons. So you almost want to put... I mean, you put an aggressor in there anyways. Aggressors have... Armed with two... Uh, with auto bolt storm gauntlets. Let me make sure that that's not special ammunition. Auto bolt storm gauntlets. Nope. So funny. Because when you look at the guns that have special ammunition, there is like no reason at all to not include the Boltstorm gauntlets um, other than it would be too powerful. And that's kind of funny justification. 
um, because that definitely exists in Warhammer. But it's usually a logical thing with like other areas of the codex or something like that. Um, it would it would be like their bolt gauntlets aren't bolt gauntlets. They're you know snare laser dart chuckers. Okay, that's not the bolt special ammunition. It's literally a bolt gauntlet. It could have special ammunition, but it would be too strong, so it doesn't. Um, but this is this is the spicy amitabala of the codex. This is so damn good. Um, and I'm thinking specifically to the Kraken and the Vengeance Round, or whatever the frog it's called. But you take the standard bolt rifle that an intercessor has. Range 30, rapid fire 1, strength 4, minus 1, 1 damage. The Kraken Round makes it range 36, strength 4, minus 2, 1 damage. Minus 2 is a big deal. That means you're picking up guardsmen. That means you are removing crute. You're taking guys that have a four up like scouts or whatever, and it's making it a six up. They're not getting that save. Um, you take guys in cover. Now they're at minus one. So if they were a three up and in cover, they go down to a two up because of the minus two. It's now a four up. You're reliably removing models with your basic infantry guy. And you're hitting at range 36, which is, it's huge. That's a long ass way to go. That's how far a Riptide shoots most of its shots, for Pete's sakes. And that's just the basic gun. I haven't even, you know, you can get dirtier with this. That's just the first place I would go. In that unit, would you put a Reaver in there? Probably not, but you definitely do put an Aggressor so that it can move without penalty and it can advance um without penalty to shoot its assault weapons which isn't much in there but there's some now in this unit you can also pack things like hell blasters um you could put uh, inceptors in there if you really wanted to that gives them the ability to fall back and still shoot so maybe one inceptor one aggressor type of thing and then like eight intercessors um but there's just so many cool things you can do with that unit that is doing different things as well um for me personally I feel like this is how you should be building your Death Watch list. And I think the bitch of this is a lot of people. Oh, the boys are so fucked. I'm, I'm looking at a comment in the chat, by the way, Harm Tosa. We'll see what happens with the Orc Codex. But keep in mind, these units can also be shooting. Um, their, their stratagem against Orcs is for every guy that dies in Overwatch, it's minus one to that charge. So forget about charging veterans, but even the intercessors. It gets ridiculous. Um, I love the, uh, the feel of customization. I love the feel of specialization. Uh, Death Watch has that as their codex, and this is an incredibly elegant way to do this. It feels fluffy. It's strategically powerful. Um, I'm looking at a Death Watch codex that it used to be you had like 20 guys and then three vehicles and a character, and that was your whole army. I think you should be closing in on 40 guys a vehicle, maybe two, and then a character or two. Um, well, several, probably. But the, the point is, like, this is absolutely stunning. You should have four or five of these units. They're harder to kill. They're packing more of a punch. They're a lot more of a punch, by the way. Their range is pretty good. And if you're an alien, get fucked. And that's, that's Death Watch. That's how it should feel. You sh it used to be in a tournament, you're like, what's the guy playing? Death Watch? And you'd kind of laugh to yourself. Now, if you're running some of these alien races, which you, you know, a lot of people are, you go, hmm, I wonder what happens. Um, and then, of course, so I'm not going to talk about Dreadnoughts and Primaris Apothecaries and that kind of stuff. That's all normal stuff. But what I do want to say, what this Codex touches on, and this is going to kind of get me into the greater conversation here in a second. Just make sure cover everything. I guess we should talk about the Corvus Black Star as well. I think it went down in cost. Um, it's still a pretty good gunship. It's not. It's not one of the best. There's other places where they're really, really good. What I like about it is, is it does have hard to hit, and then it can take a couple of things. It can take something that gives it um, reroll hit rolls of one for a model with an auspex array when targeting an enemy unit. 
in the shooting phase that cannot fly. So plus one against things on the ground, basically. You can reroll save rolls of one for this model if it is equipped with the Infernum Halo Launcher. It's okay. It makes it almost immune to DACA. Um, I mean, reroll ones is just good in general. And that's about it for that. So that's that's pretty good. Um, it moves 20 to 45, which is pretty darn good. It's a transport. Still one of the better ways to deploy some stuff. So I don't mind taking this because it has access to taking um, twin last cannons and things like uh, Stormstrike Missile Launcher. So it can be your anti-armor, which this codex doesn't necessarily lack, but it's kind of an investment to get towards. Because uh, if you're taking Death Watch... And you have like a dev unit or, or something that's shooting last cans. I don't even know if you can do that, actually. They might actually straight up not be able to do that. Uh, but you're taking like, you know, plasma guys and stuff like that, hell blasters. Is that really good anti-armor? Uh, maybe a little bit. It becomes cooler with the um, the teleportatum or whatever it's called. Well, definitely not the teleportatum, but the, uh, the relic that lets you relocate a unit. Yeah, okay, that's kind of cool. Anyways. Um... And if you have a Corvus and you're just like, well, I just want to play my Corvus, yeah, it's not going to hurt you too bad. Uh, but what I do want to say combo-wise that gets ridiculous for this army is remember all those plus one to wounds. Remember those reroll ones uh, to wound. Um, a lot of them just said Death Watch units, that kind of stuff. The mind immediately gravitates towards things like Leviathan Dreadnoughts and like um, Fire Raptors. I will say, in my opinion, let's make teleportatum a thing. How about that? Teleportatum. Anyways, um, I think those are trap units. I think if I face a Death Watch army that has a Leviathan or two, and their whole plan is to deep strike one or two of those close to me and, and just unload, unleash hell, um, I'm significantly happier to face that than a mass body pseudo horde Death Watch army, uh, in my opinion. Because those are still really expensive. Death Watch guys are still a few points more expensive across the board than everything else. And you're putting all your eggs into one basket. So one bad volley from that Leviathan um, or that Fire Raptor and you're dead. You're basically dead. Now, that being said, there is certain stuff that gets kind of ridiculous um, if they're facing certain things. So... Um, that's just true in the game in general, but I'm thinking of situations where, like, you know, that Leviathan Dreadnought's all of a sudden able to shoot all the Synapse creatures. It puts one arm into the Malanthrope and another arm into the Brute Lord, and that's, you know, you just killed almost 300 points easily and, like, without question. In fact, it'd be overkill in both instances. It, you'd, you'd hope not to put one arm into both, but you kind of have to, uh, because you can't split up the individual gun itself. But there are situations where it's like with Death Watch, there becomes zero interaction murder machines, um, which is what some people get really excited about. I personally think the way to do this, like I was saying, is a Corvus Black Star or two, uh, almost specifically just as your kind of gunboat slash anti armor. Um, they still have supersonic, they're minus one to hit. They have 14 wounds, tough seven, three up save. You can make them reroll ones. That's pretty cool. Um, they don't have the most incredible damage output, but their anti-armor potential and, and at range is, is nice, and that's okay. Um, but then I think you keep the rest of your army with like two units of veterans, including two frag cannons in both. I put one of those in the Corvus Black Star to kind of be my mobile, like, I'm going to drop it off turn two and have it just be this invincible thing. If you get orcs, it literally can, they can just never be charged, is, is what kind of happens. Um... And then I would have a couple squads of intercessors mixed out where they're moving and even advancing and still shooting um, at without penalty. And you're a turn or two away from moving up the field these blobs and just putting the hurt on people. Um, now that being said, is this like the end-all, be-all tournament winning list that I just said? No, I don't think so. Um, this is just me spitballing, but that's really good. You're talking about like 30 or 40 Space Marine bodies that hit harder than any other Space Marine bodies. Um, and if you're being tactically smart, so you can still do things like have a unit of Reavers. These guys are harassing objective holders, holding it for themselves or going after the backfield. You still can, um, get access to like pure units of stuff too. So you can do like a Hellblaster unit of three or six, putting out plasma. That used to be a big problem because it'd be like, okay, they're scary, 
But then if everything's out of their range, they're just kind of like walking across the field trying to shoot stuff. Well, now you teleport them over. They're now dead center in the middle of combat. And this is after turn one. So you didn't have to worry about the fact that they're getting shot out for a turn. And now they're not that scary anymore. They're there. They're with the rest of your bodies. You put them in cover. So they have a two up against most DACA fire. And then if someone wants to put Rend into them or try to charge, you have like a frag cannon unit nearby or something like that. All kinds of cool, scary options that way. Um, and I think that plays more to the strength of um, Codex Deathwatch and how Space Marines want to play anyways. I will say one of the ways we're going to see Space Marine or we're going to see Deathwatch is as an ally faction. Are these the new three uh, shield captains on Don, Don Eagle jet bikes? I don't think so. But I think you'll see more Death Watch than ever before because this is the most playable, strong, and powerful rules. And this is just me going off of what I've been reading on the internet and what I've seen for myself. Like every other codex that comes out, um, we're you know a month away from seeing the full realization and some of the combos. Um, but none have hit the internet so hard that people are like, that's it. That's the thing we're all doing. It's right there. Span that to a million and we win. We haven't seen that yet. Um, but one of my good friends, Anthony, is a big Death Watch player and he's over the moon of the Codex. He's very excited um, because these guys were one of the worst performing armies in the Index uh, to now being um, a very playable and awesome race. So if you guys have questions in the chat, I'd love to hear it. Uh, go ahead and post them in there. I'll take a look over. We usually don't have a lot of questions, but you know, maybe in the off chance there's some there. While you guys are catching up to me and asking those questions in the chat, I will just end by saying, once again, I want to reiterate, this was a little bit different of a codex review. I try to do it so that you can see all the pages and the stats. Um, we'll have a different setup in the future, but we did this because of the, uh, the late arrival of the codex, but then also my wife and I have been super, super busy, so this is just the best setup that I could kind of get going for right now. Um, we do have future codexes coming out, so they've announced the Harlequins, Knights, uh, these things are coming down the pipe. I actually play Knights. Um, I'm really excited about that, and we're probably going to get some new models for that. Whoa! Um, and as far as the future holds for my Warhammer content on this YouTube channel or my Twitch channel, expect to see all these Codex reviews. And I've been emailing and pressing to get it right away. We haven't even had a single Codex before the embargo just yet, but I imagine I dream of a world where that does happen, and hopefully you guys will support it and watch um, I will bring Frankie back on as well as possibly Reese or other people. Um, the only reason I ever do one of these without them is just because I'd rather do it than not do it. Uh, those guys are busy, I'm busy, and there's only a certain amount of wiggle room we can have there. Okay, so now some questions. Does Death Watch make you worried for custodies at all? Do you think they have the tools? Okay, well, cellmates, so first and foremost, and, and someday hopefully you'll understand, but if you play custodies... Um, any 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 sense of fear, worry, anxiety, it just evaporates. It's gone. I don't fear anything. I'm not worried about anything. Death Watch, if they make the mistake of entangling themselves with the golden men of Terra, uh, they will be put down like the scoundrel dogs they are. And I say that a little bit sad. Because, you know, anytime the Golden Men are called upon to put down fellow Space Marines, it harkens back to the heresy. And that's that's sad. It's, it's something to be upset about. But you know what? We'll do it. I mean... Does this guy look like he's worried? Does that look like a guy that's worried? Look how fucking golden he is. He's got a... He's got a lion head on his shoulder, dude. No, we're not worried. Uh, on a serious note, though, um, no. I think anything in power armor is is a pretty good target for custodies. Generally, it falls into that tough four, tough five category, so we're hitting you on threes, re-rolling on the charge. Our bolters are somewhat effective. It's always a little bit scary because if they get into cover or up on a ruin or something like that, um, the only good way a custodies can kind of remove them from play is to assault them. Um, for the most part, we did just get the beta rules for the Telemon Dreadnought, which I just had finished painted by my beautiful artist Israel. I'll be showing that off in my entire collection soon, and that'll be up on YouTube as well. Um, but my God. Anyways, 
Death Watch Reaver Leadership Bubble doesn't stack with the regular one, right? I so stubbornly want a Leadership Bomb trolley list with the Dark Angels Leadership Contest powers. Uh, the, the Reavers themselves don't stack, so multiple units of Reavers don't stack. It, it's very clear that way. But if you have other accesses to, or other ways to access um, Leadership Debuffers, yes, those would stack. Unless it says, for some reason, this doesn't stack with anything else in the world. But almost assuredly, none of them do. Um, Space Marines are just not the best vehicle for any kind of leadership bomb. So on the one hand, I don't want to tell you that your dream can be realized, um, fully because I think Space Marines just aren't going to do it. If you really want to play leadership debuffers, it's like, it's Dark Eldar and some of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then just a question, just wondering what army you run these days. It's Custodes, my man. Only slightly related, are you going to do one of these reviews for Eldar? I went 100% out of the loop in 40k, so I have no idea whether their current codex is considered new or old. That sounds... Bears just hopped off the couch. Um, so yeah, the kind of... You, you're using the, your, your question allows me to segue into some nice things. The short answer is no. I will not be doing previous codexes. The long answer is... I just got this, um, Thousand Suns. It's a codex that has been out. I've done a Custodes review as well. If you are super interested in having me go over a codex, um, feel free to support the channel, but also be paying for some content that you apparently want. And you can either donate or tier three sub or something, uh, roughly the cost of 35 bucks. And I will go out and buy that codex and then I will do the review. But my YouTube's not monetized, my time's not free, and I'm not going to buy every codex um, just to make a YouTube video. I did that in the past, and then I moved. And it takes moving to realize you don't need to own every codex. You just don't. <laughs> so if you out there are like, well, I'd really like a Terranids review or something like that, um, consider supporting the channel. And as an added bonus, make sure and earmark it and say, I want you to do a review of such and such, and I will do it. It might take me a little while to get to it, but I will do it. Couple more questions here. Uh, Magnus did nothing wrong. I see that a lot. You see some good combinations with Custodes and Death Watch? I don't know. Um, Custodes are mega elite, so they pair really well with cheap stuff that can supplement what they can't do very well. So they don't have high AP shooting for the most part, and they don't have bodies. So guards really nice because it can give you both. Uh, but even something like Adeptus Mechanicus is better because uh, those DACA bots are about 110 points and they give you some AP, they give you some range. Um, Death Watch is not an impossible pairing with Custodes. I just don't think they complement each other very well because you're getting fewer and fewer bodies that can pretty easily be removed except for the Custodes. Um, and Death Watch is nice in that it has really cool ammunition and stuff like that, but they don't have like high punch strong strength and um you know just the sheer daca that custodius puts out is basically the same thing as special ammunition all right it looks like that's about it what happened to your Terranids? I, it's good to see that those kind of questions get asked even in tabletop if i if i own more than one army or like what happens when i stream is i'll play another game and someone's like did he give up on starcraft where is his starcraft it's like well i just i like to play different armies and stuff uh right behind me is like half my terrors you can actually just see him over there so that, that's what happened to them anyways that's going to do it for this codex review and deep dive i hope you guys enjoyed it um like i said it's not quite as snazzy as my other ones because i like to show off the stats and the pages but ideally i try to do the codex reviews you know, add embargo, which is about a week and a half before you guys could ever get your hands on the codex. I emailed Games Workshop. I'm pushing for it. I will try to um, have more of that in the future. It wasn't by choice. Like I said, it's just what ended up happening. Um, and that's it. So make sure and uh, if you're excited about more content like this, let me know. Make sure and click the follow, all that kind of stuff. Uh, like or what is it? Sub? I don't know. Whatever, whatever it is on YouTube, do that. And uh, I will see you guys soon. All right. Thank you so much and take it easy.